Harry's wife. You're no Obama. Harry's wife functions in a deluded world. What is she? Well, we know that she is a narcissist as a consequence of the detailed analysis that I've undertaken. But what else is she? Well, she's female. She's married to Prince Harry. She has two children. Some people don't believe the children exist. Some believe that they did, she didn't carry them. Some people think that she did carry them. But what else is she beyond that? We know that she was an actress, that she had small parts in some films, Horrible Bosses, for example, and, as we're repeatedly told, that she was in Suits, the major role that she occupied, albeit very few people had actually heard of it. But beyond that, what does she actually offer? And the answer is nothing. She's not a writer. She's not a songwriter. She's not a screenwriter. She isn't a politician. She isn't an individual that, is in, that inspires people. Yes, there might be a handful of idiots that claim that she's inspirational. Inspirational as to do what? Find your way through life as a consequence of sponging off men? Is that something to aspire to? She isn't somebody who has actually invented anything or created anything. She ran a blog which provided her with a level of income and some freebies. She undertook her acting role. But beyond that, she doesn't actually provide anything. And she's limited because she has, unlike some narcissists, no innate talent in those other areas. There are some narcissists who are brilliant sports people, demagogues, fantastic writers, brilliant performers, particularly good at writing songs. Hilarious comedians, tech entrepreneurs, captains of industry, and so on and so forth. And she's none of those things, although thinks that she is. Her narcissism causes her to believe that she sits up there with those politicians, with the members of the A-list, that she is that polymath. But she isn't. For instance, she believed that she belonged alongside Michelle Obama and, at an early juncture, basically was trying to recreate being her. Being an individual that was of colour, prominent, well-known, seen for philanthropic works, having a connection to politics. Michelle Obama embodies many of the things that Harry's wife wants to be and in some respects, believes that she actually is. However, she receives repeated reminders that she is no Obama. For instance, in parts passim, there was the Obama birthday bummer, where she didn't get an invitation to Barack Obama's birthday, because she's not viewed as important enough, and indeed, the far more savvy Obamas will have recognised that it would be a problem having her attend as a consequence of her lack of discretion. Just recently, Michelle Obama undertook a book tour. This was in relation to her second book, The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times, which, of course, is a book which Harry's wife would have loved to have written, except she didn't. And she set off on a book tour which was at the back end of last year. However, what she's also done is create a podcast, The Light Podcast, which is available on Audible. We all know, of course, that Harry's wife launched a podcast, which was dull as ditch water, beige as it comes, and roundly ridiculed because it was just viewed as a means of trying to settle scores for all of the perceived slights and insults that Harry's wife has experienced throughout her life. Michelle Obama has created a podcast which tells us, in the blurb, upon the release of her second best-selling book, The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times, former First Lady Michelle Obama sets out on a very special, highly anticipated six-city US book tour. 
Harry's wife would give her eye teeth to be a former first lady. Not, of course, that that will ever, ever happen. Certainly not while married to old ginger bollocks. Furthermore, she would give her right arm to have been involved in a highly anticipated US book tour, taking in six cities. But even more so, the conversations that Mrs. Obama had were with Ellen DeGeneres, Tyler Perry, Conan O'Brien, Oprah Winfrey, Gail King, she, with people such as David Letterman, Heather McGee, Tracy Ellis Ross, and Michelle Norris. All individuals that Harry's wife would love to have engaged with. Of course, she was interviewed by Ellen DeGeneres, where one narcissist took the piss out of another. And of course, she is chums with Tyler Perry. But she didn't manage to have anywhere near as an interesting podcast as Michelle Obama has done. And in Harry's wife's deluded world, she believes that she's perfectly capable of carrying out a podcast of a similar calibre and a similar level of popularity. The themes that are involved are exactly the type of thing that Harry's wife would give up an eyeball for. Building meaningful relationships, issues connected to race, gender and visibility. The habits and principles that people have used to successfully adapt to change and overcome obstacles. The importance of lighting up for others to reveal the riches and potential around them. Now, of course, I would find some of those topics a little bit sort of lightweight, but nevertheless, there are audiences that like them. And Michelle Obama would do a far better job than Harry's wife. And the fact is that she has the book tour that involved those people. She now has the podcast, which involves what went on on that tour. And lo and behold, Harry's wife does not. And Harry's wife will be well aware of this because she'll follow the things that Michelle Obama does as a consequence of her mirroring, consequence of her character trait acquisition, the fact that she wants to be like Michelle Obama, but can't be. And when announcements such as this come their way, Harry's wife is given an all too stark reminder that she is no Obama, and that will wound her. It will frustrate her and ignite her fury that she hasn't had the book tour like Michelle Obama, that she hasn't got the successful podcast like Michelle Obama, that she's not held in the same level of admiration as Michelle Obama. It will wound her. And she will complain and whinge and moan about how unfair it is that she has been denied this. And that it is a consequence of Harry's fault. Because if he'd kept his mouth shut and his todger out of the ice, people wouldn't be laughing at them in the way that they are. And not only is she wounded by news of Michelle Obama's podcast and who's involved in it, the fact is also that it continues the devaluation of Harry because he'll be blamed for her failures. Because Harry's wife is unable to recognise that she's boring, dull and untalented. Instead, anything that goes wrong is always a failure of somebody else. That they didn't support her, that they didn't write the correct thing, that they said the wrong thing. And at the moment, it's Harry who's going to be repeatedly blamed for what are her failings. I'm H.T. Tudor. Thank you for listening.